I'm here, you're here, it's Hermitcraft time. I've just flown past the button to see this thing. Look at... Look at the green team headquarters clubhouse type thing that Scar has built. I'm, I'm incredibly envious. I'm also kind of upset because... I mean, that means that the green team... <laughs> Who's gonna want to get yellow, orange, or red if this is looking so awesome? And then there's me, stood here as a stupid purple belt looking all ridiculous. I mean, my, my face certainly isn't helping the situation. My trousers aren't helping the situation. My sleeves aren't helping the situation. And the back of my head isn't helping the situation either, my bald patch. But the purple belt is making me look extra especially ridiculous, so maybe we should try and improve that in today's Hermitcraft episode. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to build up a little purple belt clubhouse that's really gonna show up the green belt clubhouse. Okay, I'm gonna make them look bad. And then once that's done, hopefully I can progress from being a purple belt because the button will have ticked over. That seems like a totally faultless plan to me. <laughs> Here it is, looking absolutely glorious, as you can quite plainly see. This is the purple belt club hoose. <laughs> the Belt Club Hoos. It has to be said exactly like that. The Burt Belt Club Hoos. And if we pop inside here, you can see we have got all the gear that you could possibly need if you are a rocking purple belt, which I personally am. <laughs> I'm no longer embarrassed. I'm quite proud of this little place. Uh, is it? Uh, we're almost blue. I think I'm going to camp here for a little while. Not because I'm embarrassed to be a purple belt. You know, not, not because I don't want to use the Burt Belt Club Hoos. Uh, it's just, you know, I've just... It's, you know a little bit of AFKing later. This is better. This is marginally better. But I want to be I want to be here Ooh, But now it's here. I kind of want to see if I can get into the yellow crew. I Think I'm gonna camp it out and see if I can reach yellow. There's only a handful of people online right now So this could be the perfect time to strike. Oh No, I mean he already has a green thing So surely he wouldn't hit the button when it's green. I Mean surely he wouldn't we're also friends. Been friends for a long time. Please. I did it. <laughs> I hit the button. I chickened out. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I got scared. <laughs> I got scared. <laughs> well, I guess now I'm a member of the green team. And I gotta say, this new belt really suits me. I mean, look how fancy I now look. I never thought the day would come. I never thought the day would come where I can go inside <laughs> this area here. <laughs> oh, it's it's better than I even imagined. I mean, oh, is that is that it? The pump belt club hoose isn't actually sounding so bad now. It's, I mean, there's free dirt in there. Right, let's move on from the button bit. I'd say this seems about right to my eyes. I mean, obviously, I have to send it to Tango and get his approval, but I think... I think that suits the style quite nicely, so now I've just got to build up a door that is that exact size. And to do that, of course, we are going to be making use of this rather lovely system, where we have the honey blocks and the flying machines and everything like that, dropping the door down into the floor. 7x8 area we need to create, which should be a breeze compared to this. And I was right, that was actually pretty painless. So the way that it's actually worked out is quite nice, in that eight blocks which is the height of the door is the exact height of two segments so that means that in total we've only got three segments to this flying machine which keeps things nice and simple so if we hit this button right here we should see the top segment will pop off then this one and then the actual flying machine will start flying pushing the whole thing upwards and that is the door closing up obviously I've only got one slice because all the other slices are identical and then when I hit the button again, you can see that the flying machine activates and then the entire thing gets brought downwards and all compressed down at the bottom. So the door is open. And this, my friends, is exactly the reason why I campaigned so hard for honey blocks and slime blocks not to stick to one another. Because if somebody had asked me back in, say, 2017, if I could build a 7x8 piston door, I'd be like, sure, but we're going to need like a 100 by 100 area to fit in all the redstone. That was a slight exaggeration, but you get the picture. That's all been sent off to Tango for his approval, so hopefully we should be cracking on with building his door soon once we get the go-ahead. But for now, I'm back over at the industrial district area, and I want to start work on actually making this place look good or not good I suppose we're turning it into a wasteland currently it looks like a really nice place to be so I suppose we need to take out all the nice things and then start making it horrible we need to horrify this place I don't know what you'd even call that regardless of all that Iskal has just popped over he wants to do the map trade which is a little bit embarrassing given that I haven't really done anything just yet hello <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better, you better hide. Yeah. You better hide behind that wall. My goodness, you look awful. It's, it's, 
<laughs> it's not a good look. I saw you coming over that hill, and I just the horse just walked in front of me, and I thought I might be able to sidestep along with it to cover my face. Can you, can you please take your helmet off? Are you sure you want to see this? Are you... I, I need, I need to, I need to come. Well, look, I'll show yep. you one thing. I'll show you one thing. Look, this is this is an improvement. Okay, okay, but... uh-huh, that's an improvement. <laughs> I can't look at you. <laughs> you look, you look exactly like a bumble now. I know that's very true. Yeah, I do. I've actually become, I've become bumbo. I've come to deliver my map because one of the deals was that um, we, we would, we would have each other's map. Of course, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. I've got, I've got yours. So, let's, oh, okay, let's do nice. a hot swap. Here, the, yep. beautiful. This mine. Well, well. Yours look like uh, I I like your border, it's uh it's nice. I think there's something going. I think there's something wrong with yours. Too. It's just it's a, it's literally like a it's a grey block with a pimple. There's <laughs> there's a pimple on it. What? <laughs> That's so funny. I kind of felt the same the first time I saw it. I was like, oh, this doesn't actually look that impressive. Yeah, you haven't, you haven't <laughs> but... really thought too much about the map side of things. Clearly, this looks pretty ridiculous no. though. I'll give you that. Oh. I have worked all day on this. Whoa. Yeah, that's a lot and of And it blocks. is completely done. Oh, yeah, of course. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, yeah, 128 by 128. That's like 16,000 blocks. So you yep, place 16,000 blocks. A 16,000 block square of andesite, <laughs> stone, gravel. This is... That's it. This is yep. This is this looks quite cool. So what are you planning? Are you is this all or is this all under wraps? Is this all secretive? I want to create. I want to create like a broken down, not not necessarily broken down, but a, but a weathered factory feel. Whoa. Okay. That sounds that sounds really interesting. So you're gonna. So it's like an old kind of like nineteen. Uh, 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 1930s, yeah, 30. that's exactly what I was thinking. 1930s yep. Yep. kind of industrial feel, you know, brick factories. Everybody's yes. covered in in smog. Nobody has any food. Yes. White glass no shoes. Paints, I think we'll good. Yeah, no. Everybody looks like you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. Well, that was fun. And while I was chatting with this gal, I came up with the most effective way, I think, to turn this entire area into a wasteland, which is to do a combination of path blocks, dirt, stone, gravel, and all those sorts of things. I mean, look, this looks totally dead, and it also looks very dead on the map, which is good too. It is going to take a long old time, though, because, you know, there's 3,600 seconds in an hour, and I would say, on average, I probably do about two path blocks per second. And there's 16,500 blocks to do. That's actually quite a lot of hours. Right, I would say I'm around about halfway done. Just getting these final blocks in place right here. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do with the lake. I don't know whether I'm going to leave the lake or if I'm going to get rid of it. Oh gosh, I'm not even halfway done, am I? I'm not even close to being halfway done. How does it look on the map though? It looks... Pretty cool. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Multiple hours later now, and progress is coming along very gradually. <laughs> but we are, we are getting there. In fact, I actually haven't, I haven't refreshed my map in ages. Let's see how that's looking. Nice, a complete wasteland, exactly how I imagined it. Come on, these are the final few stages now. Obviously, we still have all of the water in place, and I'm going to work out what we're going to do with that. But there we go. This thing is now all fully pathed up. The good thing about it being paths as well is that it's actually mob proof. So no mobs are going to spawn on these path blocks. And obviously when we remove all the other solid blocks and things, then this entire area is going to be completely mob proof, which is pretty handy if we're building up mob farms and things like that. But here it is. This is our wasteland. And actually, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I mean, it's not, it's definitely not beautiful, but it's a good solid start. This is an interesting start, and when we start building up these factories and these pipelines and obviously all of the farms and the massive industrial structures that are going to be going in here, we're really going to play off that wasteland theme, and I, I think it, it should end up looking like a really interesting project. Now on the topic of interesting projects, let's head over to Tango's base. I just got the go-ahead from him that he likes the door design, he thinks it looks cool, so I've got to clear out a space and actually start work on the redstone, which I've just thought, he uses a ton of redstone resources. Um... Do I actually have enough to build up this door? I can't even think. I mean, it's a lot of observers. I, I, I've got this stuff. 
probably don't have enough pistons. Yeah, definitely not enough observers. Hopefully the store in the shopping district is all fully stocked. We're also going to need a decent amount of space for this thing. I mean, this is how far down we actually have to go beneath the door. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. That is everything cleared out. So now it is time to actually start constructing this thing and placing all of the redstone in place. So I guess first things first, we need to do the bottom flying machines. Then we need to start doing the top section and then connect all of it up. I mean, this whole thing kind of is built in three stages. Now, I have got my fingers so crossed right now. One diamond for eight. I mean, I am very, very glad that I sold my bits because... Yeah, I mean, we're probably going to need... I mean, we might need all 64 of those. I imagine we probably will. <laughs> I guess throughout the entire duration of building this thing, naturally I'm going to have to listen to Iron Golems dying. I mean, come on, what did I expect? This is Tango's base. Of course I'm going to have to listen to Iron Golems dying. This is one slice of our piston door. This is all the flying machines and things. And I've actually been thinking there is definitely a way that I can make this less observer intensive by just having redstone lines running across here instead of the full observer setup on every single one because I think each one of these slices probably used around about half a stack of observers and that is expensive. All right, I didn't sell my mustache to spend it all on observers. So, so yeah, I think we can do this. As I start placing in these observers, this thing should start to move, okay? And I'm hoping that it moves in the way that I want it to because otherwise we're going to start running into issues, all right? <laughs> so gradually I'm going to make my way down. This is going to change some things. Okay, okay, okay. And then this last observer is the important one. But that all seems like it's function. So there we go. Our door is now closed. A beautiful dirt door. <laughs> I think that's got to change. When I place in this piece of redstone dust, we should now see that the door will actually open up. And if it does, then that means that this thing is actually working and our piston door is fully functional. There it is. Okay, okay, this is really, really good. This is really, really good. So if I hit a button on this area, now we get a full, full test. Closing. Opening. <laughs> Nice. Okay, so that's all. It's all. It's all done. I mean, obviously, I need to fill in all the strips and everything, but that's that's been plain sailing, hasn't it? Taiko, Taiko, Taiko! Oh no! Oh no! I forgot to. Oh, I activated the door, it didn't have any blocks on the front of it, and then my door <laughs> flew up into the building. I hope it hasn't broken anything important. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and also the worst thing is, is Tango's just logged in. Oh, he's going to see it. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> Here he is, here he is. He just needs to bop through and see what's going on. <laughs> Your door is up there. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> I've never had that happen before. I, I think this might actually be the most, <laughs> the most, that is the most apt, it, yeah, the most accurate, thank you for giving me the word Tango because I completely couldn't think of it. That is the most accurate advancement I've ever made in my entire life. Anyway, after reconstructing the entire piston door for a second time, now everything should all be working. I actually haven't tested this, which is so stupid. So let's just cross our fingers and hope for the best. Good stuff. Now, obviously, Tango can do a slightly better looking design on this thing. I've just chucked that in there as a blank. But I so down. Phew. As you can probably tell, I was quite nervous for that because I suddenly thought it might not actually function. But finally, this thing is now all completed. So let's find out what Tango thinks of it. Dude, you have no idea how strange it is for me just turning up and seeing my mustache on someone else. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm looking handsome, aren't I? Look at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there's me. I, I've been... You have no idea the comments that I've been receiving. I have constructed you got a thing here, yeah. yeah. I, I am mean, excited. Okay. I will just say, it. I, I mean, I don't know if you managed to capture it. Uh, I, I did have I, a slight... I did see. There was, yeah. there was an incident. Yeah, there was an incident. Yeah, I mean that's the thing with flying machines is that you're you kind of have to stop them and and I forgot right. to put a front on your door which meant that it uh-huh. no longer had anything to crash to into to stop it. it. So I was just like, whoop, <laughs> so I'm out of here. Like, yep. <laughs> straight up into your face. But it well, should I'm excited. Now all be working. So you can do the honors and you the can magic press the button. button. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh. There we go. Look at that. And up it goes and there it is. So you, you, your piston door is all closed and I then love it. And I can just obviously swap out this front if I want to, like, make this quartz or something. No worries there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no problems yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking of doing, like, a little room in a hallway in here and then a bubble vader that takes me all the way up to my storage room. I think we'll see. We'll get to that. That sounds really, really cool. I love this base. I love uh, how it's coming together. I did spot there is also Did a... you see it? Did <laughs> yeah. you see it? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I actually saw uh, it on Twitter, and it, it, it made me laugh <laughs> right. because... I've never the seen Sasserino. Yeah, so I've good. never seen it fit more perfectly on, oh, on it's just someone yeah, someone suggested it in streams <laughs> and just right into those googly eyes, it's so perfect. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It, it may stay post mustache, that's all I'm saying. Maybe. <laughs> so that's that job done then. Mustache is in place, doors looking good. Uh, let's head back over to the industrial district. But before we do, I mean there's no one else online. It's Exumaboid's camera account, that is it. I am chilling on the server alone. I might be able to make some progress here. It seems that in the process of waiting, more people have joined. I'm 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 kind of running out of hope here. I just really want a yellow belt. I think that would be so cool. Here it is! Yellow, yellow, yellow! Yes! It just clicked over and I'm so glad that it did because I'm bursting for the toilet and I was getting scared that I was gonna have to leave the button and potentially not get this wondrous thing. There we are! We're a yellow belt! We've gone from purple to yellow in one episode, and that feels good. <laughs> right. Now it's time for me to sprint to the loo. Oh, yeah. I look cool. I mean, my face needs some work. My face is, is not a good situation, but my belt is looking... It kind of looks like I've just got a gold belt buckle. <laughs> it looks like I've got, I've got one of those belt buckles that just goes right the way across. But it suits me. It looks good. I mean, I wonder... I wonder who's going to be the first to get red. We're all getting pretty close now. Anyway, after that two-hour detour, uh, let's quickly run over to the industrial district because I want to think a few things through, okay? This is this is a big project. This is a big deal. I really want to get it right. I don't want to rush into anything, and I want to get everything worked out with this, and I've been doing a lot of thinking about how I want the structure of this industrial district to be. And I can't, I can't take this space seriously. And the way that I think it's going to work is I'm going to have a big central storage system that is going to go in the center here. So this this is going to be dug down into the ground so that we can hide away all of, the, well, we don't even necessarily need to hide away all the item tubes. I guess we could have the item tubes above for the ground, but I want to dig the storage system down so that it doesn't take up loads of space because Obviously, the storage system is going to have to be pretty big. I want to have storage silos with redstone lamps. There's going to be tons upon tons of chests, loads of layers. That's going to look really, really impressive. And then all of the farms, I think I'm almost tempted to kind of layer them up. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's kind of difficult. I'm trying my best to think through how I actually want it to look. We could have towers. We could almost do it like that, but then there's certain farms that don't necessarily lend themselves to towers. Things like sugarcane farms and the melon and pumpkin farms with flying machines, they don't really lend themselves to towers, but then we could just have multiple layers for them. And they could be like strips. We could have one side that is consisting of towers and then one side that consists of strips and then it all feeds into one central water stream which then all runs into our storage system. And the other really big thing that I want to do is to create an actual working control center where I can see how everything is functioning. So I want to be able to see which farms are activated using levers and then redstone lamps showing them being activated, which ones are actually producing items. So there'll be redstone lamps connected up to the water streams, which will tell me if there's items flowing in, if the farms are harvesting correctly. I mean, all that sort of stuff. I want to have full control and full visuals 
of how many items are flowing in and everything like that. So that that's definitely going to be interesting, and I think I can lump that in with the storage system in the center, but the more I think about it, yeah, I think the flying machine base strips, things like we could have sugarcane farm, we could have the melon and pumpkin and the bamboo all stacked up on top of one another, looking absolutely massive, being monstrous farms, and then we have the central section with all the water streams and things like that, and then on this side we could have the towers of all the different things that require tower based farms and like the the TNT based things, the blast chambers, the mob farm which obviously will go right up in the sky. It's gonna look dramatic. It's gonna be a crazy looking place. I'm gonna do some sketching. I'm gonna do some sketching. I'm gonna write out some ideas. Let me know down in the comment section any ideas that you have as well. I'm excited to hear your thoughts. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. And I have got to tell you, it feels good to be building farms again. It feels good to be thinking about farms. I've realized throughout this entire Hermitcraft season so far, I haven't really touched a farm. I mean, I've done the iron farm and the villager breeder. That's it. That is so out of the ordinary for me. That is so out of the ordinary. I've been working on building. What's happened? What's happened to my brain?